Okay, we're continuing on our project management and DMAIC overlap right now, and we're going to be using ASQ's flowchart template. And you've likely said to yourself, hey, wait a second, I've had classes where I'm making flowcharts before. I don't need to learn how to make a flowchart. Well, I want to show you a completely different tool for making flowcharts. And this, in, in this case, a tool provided by the American Society for Quality, or ASQ, and show some different functionalities that can be integrated into flowcharts different from the types of flowcharts you may be doing in a HACCP program. So at the end of this video, you will be able to discuss the roles of ASQ and standardizing methods of measuring quality. We're going to document a process, identifying the decisions you might need to make in that process. We'll use ASQ's flowchart template for documenting a food manufacturing process. We're going to keep it simple, and we're going to make Deming's burnt toast. <laughs> you think W. Edwards Deming is tired of burnt toast yet? But uh, I, uh, uh, as you can guess, I'm a big fan of W. Edwards Deming's writings, and he he wrote about uh, burnt toast and quality systems. And we're gonna make some Deming toast. And last but not least, we're going to apply decision making steps and link out to standard operating procedures for defining the disposition of a product. Ooh, that sounds great. So. Oh, there's my Deming quote about burnt toast. Our system in make and, ex and inspect, if applied to making toast, would be expressed, you burn, I'll scrape. So why do I keep bringing up this quote? Well, the idea being, let's plan our processes out. Let's be methodical about this and have appropriate specifications in place so that we can know when processes are in control and when processes are not in control. And if we are consistently applying those measures and observations, we can keep control in place and keep from burning our toast. And as a food scientist, I just, I liked the analogy of making toast because it's a very simple process and it's something that we can easily document and it's a great teaching tool. I think of Back when I used to teach a lot more HACCP courses, we would often make our first HACCP plan making toast because there's very few steps and very few inputs and outputs. Um, and as such, because we're simplifying that system, you can see the, the requirements. If you can make toast, you can make a sandwich. If you can make a sandwich, you can start to make multiple kinds of sandwiches. If you make a sandwich, you can make all sorts of things. And it's the same with a quality assurance quality control program. If you can start small, you can make it bigger and add complexity as you go along. So let's not just burn toast. Let's think about the core decisions in a food processing operation related to the quality and food safety. And we will be starting to overlay decision-making processes. In essence, we're making a logic framework so that within your processing operations, whether those are line workers or processing supervisors can go about and see where they need to make decisions and they can then link out to the appropriate decision-making tools so that they're not banging on your door every five minutes saying, what do I do next? What do I do next? So yes, PDSA, PDSA, everything's PDSA. So yeah, we, we talked about the toaster in a previous, oops, sorry, pardon me. We talked about a toaster in a previous slideshow, but we're gonna be using an impinger and we're going to think about what are some of those parameters that are defining the, the quality of our toast? Well, it's going to be the color of our toast, and that is defined by the temperature of the toaster, the speed of the impinger, and the airflow with the impinger. We talked about um, doing some uh, root cause analysis with this toaster before and figuring out why the toast was burning, doing that root cause analysis. Well, now we're going to think about developing a flowchart for using this toaster so we can start to make decisions about it and using ASQ's flowchart tool specifically so that we can use a standard methodology. Now we have seen flowcharts before but let's just talk about some of the um, unique features of being able to do a logic framework within that. So Yes, you're going to have your start and different tasks or activities within the flowchart. And as we mentioned a uh, hundred times before in our HACCP classes, these boxes are kept extremely simple, usually just the unit operation or just the very bare minimum specifications. Lots of times I work with students who 
will want to put in entire sentences or paragraphs within that flowchart. You're now, instead of making a flowchart, you're making a standard operating procedure. And there's nothing wrong with that. But a flowchart is intended to be a very quick visual schematic and not have long-winded um, descriptions and so on. That said, I do see in certain cases very few quick descriptions such as temperatures or times or speeds overlaid into flowcharts to help facilitate because again a flowchart in many respects becomes that simplified operating procedure. You can visualize the process and if you have some of those operating parameters in there that can help. But is defining the use of this flowchart in terms of quality is the fact that we've got these decision-making points within our process and at these are these are points where we need to make some sort of decision-making call whether we want to make it a quality assurance call or whether we want to make this into a process control as part of our HASP plan but these are decisions that we need to make about the disposition of this product and then align additional actions to that product depending on the uh, operating procedure and the, the operating limits or the critical limits within that procedure. So we've seen lots of these before. Here's an example taken straight from a HACCP plan, but in this case, this is taken straight from a, a generic model HACCP plan for making uh, poultry products. In this case, those decisions are just overlaid as CCP1B, CCP2B. And in the case of ASQ, they're actually saying, let's overlay right within the process flow what those decisions are. And so in, if we were to take this and apply ASQ's model, you would have a decision-making tree within there saying, is your product meeting final wash parameters. I don't know whether this would be perhaps on final wash, perhaps microbiological results. On chilling, it could be temperature management for this product. They would have a, a decision-making tree within that where you have a, does this product meet this standard? Yes. If it does, then it goes this path in the flowchart. If it does not, then it goes this path in the flowchart. And in many cases, depending on the situation, you can actually run that product backed up. So, oh, I actually want to bring this slide up in a little bit because I'm going to actually jump out here and I'm not even going to edit this out. I'm just, I'm going to, I'm just, because we're all friends at this point, we've seen lots of each other's videos. I want to jump out to my whiteboard here. Oh, let's jump. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to have a little bit of fun here. My kid is, uh, she took over my whiteboard on the computer and she drew a lovely picture of me. Isn't that awesome? And I am usually not quite that red. Um, but yay, go Niagara College. You can see I'm wearing my Niagara College t-shirt in this lovely drawing by my kid. Let's jump back to my proper whiteboard, though. I drafted this up beforehand, but I, I, I'm jumping out to the whiteboard. Why? Because I want to just reinforce the fact that at, at this stage of your process, so again, we're doing our toast. Just draft it. I, I kept thinking if I put it up in PowerPoint, you're going to think, well, you have to formalize it. You have to type it. And for some people, typing, honestly, is a really good experience. But more often than not, I say uh, when doing your early stage flowchart or process uh, process flow, when you're starting to overlay those decision-making trees, start on a scrap piece of paper or start on a whiteboard and just go through and think about each of the steps as you're, as you're working on it. So I'm receiving, I'm doing a quality, uh, quality control check. So perhaps I'm doing some sort of uh, specification. I've got an SOP for this to say the bread that I'm receiving for making toast should not be moldy. It should have a minimum of at least one week shelf life remaining on that product. Um, the product should meet these certain color standards or ingredient standards, no allergens, etc. And at that point we can go through accept or reject. And so there is a decision making tree in, in this part. And I'm going to see, can I make my pen red? Yes, I can. Hoo -hoo. So in essence, that could be a bit of a decision-making tree. That's my diamond. Then we're going to store the bread. 
We're going to unpack it. We're going to load the toaster. We're going to toast at 400 Fahrenheit for two minutes speed on that impinger. If you remember, the impinger is like a little conveyor belt toaster. They can be quite large, actually. And then we're going to do a quality control check. So we're going to do, um, just off the top of my head, well, let's do coloration and moisture content. And so, again, this is another decision that we need to make. So I'm going to overlay a diamond here. Coloration and moisture content, is it too light, too dark? And in terms of moisture content, is it too high in moisture? I, I wrote too wet. If it's too light, we can run that product back up and reload the toaster and toast it again. If it is too dark, well, we're going to have to reject it. And at this point, it may be going off for um, composting or animal feed. If it is too moist and too much residual moisture, but it's, it is also um, the right coloration, we can put it back to the toaster and run it again. So we've got a decision-making process down here, and then we're going to go to cool and package. So we, I wanted to just stress the fact that it's really a good idea to draft it up on a piece of paper. If you are working within a real facility, you want to go out and do a site-specific observation to ensure that the process flow that you are documenting is actually representative of the process that you are representing. Oftentimes, people will sit in their boardroom or sit in their office or sit in their house as it is uh, in these days of COVID, and they will document a process, but it doesn't actually represent the the physical, the physical um, steps that are being done. In other cases, I, I work with some facilities that are startups and they don't necessarily have all of the detail. And this is where I, I also say, you know what? In quality assurance and quality control programs, these documents are meant to be edited. And that's where jumping over to a uh, file format allows for really good editing. So I mentioned before, we are working with the quality tools from ASQ and ASQ's website, uh, pardon me and don't look at all my tabs, but ASQ's website has all of the wonderful seven basic quality tool templates available for anyone and everyone to use. And so I encourage all of you wonderful food scientists out there to access these. And if you are following along with the Niagara College course, I have provided these templates for you in the Blackboard site. Let's go back to this template. And um, these tools were developed by Ishikawa. Ishikawa was an um, engineering guru from Japan who helped with the um, same period as uh, W. Edwards Deming. He was focused on manufacturing excellence and improving manufacturing systems in the post-war Japan period, and that's what helped Japan become such an amazing um, industrial powerhouse during the 1980s and 1990s, that uh, they developed these fantastic um, and incredibly efficient systems that were standardized so that companies across the board could use those systems and allow plug-and-play sort of functionality from one company to the next. So. You have likely seen this before. What I like about this ASQ template as compared to just trying to draft something up in Word or whatever is that you go along. This this box here is what they provided and I didn't physically delete it, but uh, I can go along and do make sure that you enable the macros in your, in your Excel program. And let me get out of the draw functionality here. If I click on, on the button here, it's going to give me my box and I can drag it and drop it wherever I want on that grid. And then I can type in whatever I want. What I have done is just, uh, rather than watching me cut and paste, I have done a whole lot of different tools here and I've gone through and made up my bread process. So I'm receiving my bread. I'm going to evaluate that bread to QC SOP 123 and I can overlay that I've got an SOP over here from a document tab. That means that somewhere in my um, standard operating procedure um, filing system, I will have an operating procedure that indicates exactly what are the parameters that I'm looking for here. 
Now, am I going to accept my bread? Yes, I can carry on. Or if no, I'm going to refuse shipment. And perhaps, again, I could possibly even have a refuse shipment operating procedure within my facility as well. I could be documenting that over here. That uh, These are the sorts of dialogues that um, quality control and quality assurance need to have along with product development. So review shipment, possibly a document. So let's just, just for fun, let's make a document here. Let's call it, I'm gonna type in here, SOP refused ship. And we'll, I, I'm just gonna arbitrarily number it. But within different quality management systems, the documentation and filing uh, management systems will be completely different depending on the manager. But at the same time, very organized and um, connected out so that end users who are using these different flow charts and are using different operating procedures are able to quickly link between all of them. So bread to storage, then we're going to identify, oh, our, uh, we have to see the, the purchase orders for toast. We're going to unpack the bread, load the toaster. The toaster is then set to two minutes at 400. So this is an example where I'm saying, don't overload your flow chart with details. But in this case, it is very telling and it helps identify the process specifications very, very quickly and efficiently. So I'm not writing a whole paragraph. I'm just putting in just a couple words. Now I've got a check color SOP. And this again, as I mentioned before, perhaps I've got in my check color SOP, uh, moisture content evaluation and a color chit. It could be a color meter. I also brought up this slide here. Oftentimes in manufacturing facilities, I will see color chits. And these are um, laminated cards or photographs of what the product should look like and um, a quality operator or a line operator could come along and say, hmm, it matches number five, except it matches number one, reject, it goes back into the toaster, it matches number nine, it goes to reject compost. So color okay, too dark, reject product, color too light, and the line goes back to load the toaster and the product goes back. And at that point, Color okay. Oh, I you know what I didn't put in? I didn't put in. Yes. Huh. So if the product color is okay, yes. And we've got that SOP up here, SOP 456, finish product specification, and perhaps in there is this color chit, and perhaps at the quality control lab or the quality control uh, module within the manufacturing facility. You'll have a photograph laminated on the wall for uh, the quality operator to be able to quickly refer to. So color okay, yes, cool, the product, and it goes to packaging. So what I like about this ASQ quality tool is that it is really quite easy to use and the cut and paste features are Really, it's nice, it just, it just snaps to where you want it to go. Do start overlaying these sorts of yes, no decisions. And honestly, I've had lots of conversations with different industry members out there saying, I'm overwhelmed within my quality team. My quality team doesn't know how to make decisions. If you have flowcharts of this sort that have those routine sorts of decisions that link out then to the operating procedures. This helps facilitate the workforce so that they can be empowered to make their own decisions. Two, it just keeps things really, really organized. I, I can't say enough about how important it is to take the time and both think through what your process steps are and document them first out using informal means like a whiteboard then convert it over into documents. Do remember that these documents are intended to be modified and they are intended to be updated and revised and you don't have to write one document for the rest of infinity. You can go back and make revisions to it. And I believe in the other course you talk about uh, change management within document control, but if you've got this sort of document filed away in your system, 
you can come back and quickly make modifications to either the operating procedures or the flowchart itself. All right, so you have another tool available to you from ASQ. We have done the uh, check sheet tool, we have done the quality tool, and we'll have more tools coming up in some future videos. I always look forward to hearing from you, and I hope this video was helpful for you. Take care, and we will talk to you again soon.